Hi makers, it's Anouk here from Makers Loft with another great project from our Makers Box range. In your pack you would have received some macrame cord, some wooden beads, a wooden ring, a hook, a bead threader, some paints, a little pot, soil and pebbles and a succulent cutting. We're going to start with painting our beads and our little pot. Everything you don't need for that, we'll put to the side. So what you'll need is your paint brushes, your wooden ring, your beads, and your little pot, your paper cup, and your skewer. We're going to start with putting a bead on our skewer. This is to help us paint it. Painting the ring is optional, but today I'm going to paint this ring black. And you can also leave your bowl white if you prefer that. Just be sure to paint some sealant on the inside before planting your pot. So we'll start with painting the beads first. It helps to have a hairdryer handy to dry in between coats. Next, we're going to apply some clear satin varnish on the inside of our bowl. Sit these to the side to dry. So let's get started on our macrame plant hanger. We're going to start with putting our painted ring on our hook. Mine's not very visible because it's black and I've got the black background. I've also pre-cut eight lengths of three meters. Grab one length and fold it in half. So one side is going to have a loop and the other side is going to have the two lengths. We're going to attach our folded lengths onto the ring using a lark's head knot. So coming in from behind, we're going to place the loop through the ring, pull on it, and put the ends through the loop. Then pull that tight. Grab your next three meter length and do another lark's head knot coming in from behind, putting the ends through the loop and pulling it tight. Repeat this step for the remainder cords. This is what it'll look like on one side and on the other side it'll look like this. Just make sure that all the loops are the same on each side. Next we are going to do a square macrame knot. For this you're going to need four strands in total. So I grab four strands and I'm going to move the remainder off to the side. Starting 
on the left hand side the far left cord is going to cut across the center double cords which are called your anchor cords it's going to come in front of your anchor cords and then your right hand cord is going to sit over the top of your left hand cord kind of like a figure four if you like your right hand cord is going to go around the back of all of the other cords and come in through the opening of the four slide that up and pull it tight once you reach the top we are now going to do exactly the same knot the other way around in mirror image so now the left hand cord is going to cut across the front of the anchors the left hand is going to sit in front of that and cut around the back and come out through the opening of the back to front four again slide up your knot and then pull tight you've now completed one square knot we're going to continue this coming down this first group of strands and we're going to do 15 square knots so 15 on the left and 15 on the right that's our second third four fifth continue this till you have 15 if you struggle remembering which side your last knot is on you might find it helpful to see where your last front loop is that will remind you where your next side is so my front loop is on the left hand side so my leading strand will be on the left hand side when your loop is on the right hand side your leading strand will be on the right hand side You can count back how many knots you've done by counting one side of the forward loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that's my fifteen square knots finished. It's important to remember that you tighten your knots as you go, as it's very difficult to go back and do that later. I'm now going to put this one to the side and grab my next group of four strands. And repeat that process. Grab the next four strands and do 15 square knots using these. And again, 15 square knots on the last group of strands. If you find your length of square knots are a little bit uneven you can adjust it by holding the anchor strands and just gently sliding your knots up a little bit until they're all even we're now we're going to put our beads on so grab your beads handy and your threading wire handy 
starting on the left hand side, grab your two anchor strands and towards the end, place your cord through the threading wire. Pinch that together, grab a bead, slide the bead onto the wire and onto the cord. Remove your threading wire and put it somewhere safe. I'm going to put one square knot above my bead and one square knot below my bead. So I'm going to start with deciding how long I want my gap to be. So I'm going to go about there. Square knot. So one on the left and one on the right. Tighten my square knot. Slide my bead up and place another square knot below my bead. Repeat this, placing your beads evenly on all four groups. Next, we're going to learn how to do a spiral knot. We are going to leave an even gap above the bead as we are below the bead. The spiral knot is the same start as the square knot. Starting on the left hand side with the figure four, this time we're going to stay on the left hand side. This is what makes the knot spiral, like that. We're going to do 30 spiral knots on all four groups. So our spiral knots will be counted per knot. We are going to do 30 spiral knots. You can check how many you have by counting the loops on the side. need to create the basket for our pot to sit in. Be sure to have your bowl handy for measuring. I've got my one that I painted black earlier ready to go but I also have a white painted one so that you can see it in the video. Let's start with creating a circle. So we're going to grab the set from the far left and the set from the far right and bring those together like this. We are going to start with grabbing two strands from the set on the left and two strands from the set on the right. If it helps, you can move the remainder to the side so that they don't get in your way. We are now going to do a square knot 
with these four strands. Choose where you would like your basket to start. The two middle ones will be your anchor. Adjust your knot so that your lengths are even while pulling on your anchor cords. We're now going to grab the two that we put to the side earlier and we're going to come around and grab two from the next set along. Again, two middle ones will be your anchor cords and we're going to use the other two to knot with. Make sure your knot is the same height as the first knot you've done. And remember these are square knots. So one knot is a figure four on the left and then a figure four on the right. We are now going to grab the other two strands from the second set and grab two strands from the one next to it around the back. Sometimes it helps to turn your hook over at the top. But I'm going to leave mine. You can also choose to do more than one square knot for these baskets. Sometimes two or three can look nice as well, depending on how big your pot is. Now I'm going to use the two remainder sets and bring them together and do my last square knot. Remember to double and triple check the height of your knot so that they're all even. I now have a round start of my basket. The spacing of your next lot of square knots is very dependent on the size bowl you have. I tend to work with the height of my pot or even a little bit less. So I'm going to go with about three centimeter spacing for the next set of square knots. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab one square knot and the next one across and we're going to get the two left hand cords from that knot and the two right hand cords from the other knot and again we are going to bring the center ones together for the anchors and the outside ones are going to be used for the knotting. Repeat this process, grabbing the remainder two from this knot and the next two from the next one. Moving around in a clockwise direction and making sure that all your knots are even and lined up. This will make a big difference on how your pot will sit in your basket. I'm now going to finish up with the last two to close the circle. So we now have something that resembles a net. What we need to do next is close our net off so that our pot can sit inside it. Measure how long you need those bottom pieces to be from your last knot to close it off. Be sure to hold your hand firmly at the bottom so that your pot doesn't fall out. I'm going to go with another three centimeters to gather 
the bottom of my basket. I've got loads of thread left at the bottom, so I'm going to get my scissors and give it a little bit of a cut. Remember, it's always better to have too much cord than not enough. I'm going to use the longest of these cut cords to gather the bottom of my basket. Make sure everything is hanging straight. With the cord that I have that I've cut off, I'm going to bring it around the back three centimeters down from my previous set of knots. I'm going to do the figure four around the front. Bring the right hand cord around to the back and we essentially have the start of a square knot just using one cord. I'm going to repeat this process as a square knot to gather the base of my basket. You can choose how long you want this gathering to be. But I'm going to do five square knots. completes your plant hanger. Remember you can choose how long you want your tassel to be. I like to leave mine quite long. When you have some time later, you can unravel all of this and get your hair comb and undo the ply of your cotton. This will give it much more of a tassel finish. Grab your two little bags with your pebbles and your soil in it. And we're now going to put the soil in our little pots. Your succulent is just a cutting, so it won't have any roots. It'll grow roots in its own time. So all you need to do is poke it in the soil. I'm going to use my skewer in the center of the soil for the stem of my plant to go down. And then we're going to place some pebbles as the top layer on us on top of our soil. We're now ready to place our pot back into our plant hanger. Your little succulent shouldn't need too much care. All it needs is a little bit of daylight and some drops of water either once a week or once every couple of days.